Hi, I'm Jeffrey O'Brien, and this is the first event of the Spring Semester of the Holloway Poetry Series. I curate this along with Jane Gregory. Thank you, Jane. Um, and we're really thrilled tonight to have Bernadette Mayer here all the way from Albany, um, meeting with our own Christian Nagler. Um, there are many more events in the semester. In two weeks, Simone White will be here, and she'll be doing a talk for Mixed Blood earlier that day on the 24th of February at 4 in the department lounge. Okay. Um, and then the readings are always at 6.30 on Wednesdays. Then March 9th, Graham Faust will be here. Um, and then April 6th, we will have a very special event for the Holloway Poet in Residence this semester, Anna Moskovakis. Where are you, Anna? Let me embarrass you. Okay. Um, and after that, there'll actually be a reception down the hall um, with free food and drink. Um, and then we'll round up the semester on April 13th with Frank Wilderson, the noted Afro-pessimist scholar, but who's also a poet, and he'll be wearing his poet hat that night. Um, so, tonight we will have Christian Nagler and then Bernadette, and to introduce Christian, um, Claudia LaRocca. Thank you. Hi everyone, it's so nice to be here. Um, so what can I tell you about Christian Nagler? I haven't actually spent all that much time with him, uh, not really but the moments of encounter have felt like the real deal. From having the unsettling... <laughs> I had to pay them extra to do that. Um, from having the unsettling privilege of taking his participatory yoga for adjuncts performance lecture a few years ago, to the delightful, heady privilege of getting to write about this project, which contains a typical Nagler mix. <laughs> of intelligence, subversion, politics, and the sublime. This mix is immediately apparent in conversation with Christian, which I've enjoyed in a leisurely periodic back and forth with him around questions of art and labor not to mention the labor of art and the art of labor. I'm delighted to report that this back and forth will soon have another installation, as he is about to do some writing for SF MoMA's open space, where I've just begun my tenure as editor-in-chief. It's a conversation that began when we were both in residence at Headland Center for the Arts in 2013. I remember a long, rich afternoon spent sitting in a room shot through with light, talking about a lot of things, the details of which are no longer clear in my head. And I remember that same summer, and this memory is very clear. I remember being in another room, this one full of other people, all of us listening to Christian Reed from his novel In Progress, the novel that has become Human Capital, A Life, which will be published this year, yay. I remember that shock of pleasure which comes from encountering something which seems utterly inarguable. That is to say, both surprising and inevitable like turning the corner of a highway and finding a bear in the middle of the road, or something. I might be getting a little lost in my metaphor. Maybe I should just say, I love what Christian makes. How lucky we are that he is about to share some of it with us. for that introduction, Claudia. Thanks for inviting me, Jane and Jeffrey. It's a, um, it's a real honor to, to read with Bernadette. I'm gonna read from something that right now, it doesn't have a title, um, and it's a little long, and it's just gonna go straight through. So. There, there is something that counts as wrong. Do you, do you love me? I love all strangers, everybody. Yes, good. That doesn't mean I want like a, like a thing. Bullshit. Really, I can't. Yes, you can. How? Don't panic. Just walk into the night until you drop exhausted. 
okay, enough, let's, let's just go dance. And like rejoicing in it because it rejoices in us, then movement is everywhere the world is. But you must apply yourself to this, the sleeping child talking gibberish. The entire past, which is so long when I think of it, makes me want to tell, tell it all now. We cling to youth, we, to the young, to each other, to ourselves, and we are not successful. But we always remember what color the chair is, a chair we can actually sit down on like, like before. Wait, I don't remember the chair. Of course you do. Folding metal one? Uh-huh, see, you do remember. Off with the radio, on with the street noise. Taking leave of you always makes me think of meeting you, of what it was like to, to not know you, then know you. You're a whole s social system like that. What? Speak up. Not like an individual, like a whole system. What else? I'm just telling the truth. Can we just get along for the weekend, let it be regular? And I hope by the grace of God that we who look at it in this way will be truly taught and greatly comforted if we need comfort. All right, at a dinner party, for someone who made us anxious, Jane. She had a grown son who was maybe a raver. She roasted a chicken. How much does the air change in a room over 45 minutes? We wish she hadn't closed the window. There was not quite a, a smell or a, do you, I, I mean, yes, don't worry. We are doing something together, wishing that. I spilled so many drinks, partly into my bloodstream. We're thrown into a neighborhood we never chose. Perhaps no one ever chose it. It just happened. It just occurred to each of us, in each, in our own time. Cars lights across the bedroom wall. Is that, is that you? Did you have a nice time? A rhythm involving, involving injury recovery. Techniques of suggestion. You humanly approach me. Your halting is quotable. I can acquire your behavior, hope it right up, washing your face as if to make it clean. The optic nerve takes it right in. I see you, you are fluorescent turquoise, eyes down in rapt attention, writing something, this even. You are an ailing institution for five years, in debt, mismanaged, swollen pensions, whatever, built on a cursed burial mound, erected with unreinforced concrete in the in the pre-ethical days. I was born in the 70s. Exactly, that's what I'm talking about. To be small and old body in the city. I mean, without music. Small heart, sure. Once you were better, you became obsessed with getting better and better. You were an addict for relational wisdom. You were gentle. How long would it be before we knew we wanted to feel good about our ordinary? Post-70s economics is the science of time as a scarce resource. You have come to be you by watching yourself. You must be satisfied with a glimpse. Forward, then. Uh, okay. Watch me. Onward. No, I literally can't do it. Let's take a cab. There's no way we can afford a cab. You have mm. such a sweet, sweet... I ache. Silence. I ache. TV, yells to next room, I ache, okay. A worry, a worry about passing away, I can't not say it. I worried all the time that you would go, still do. Too easy to say I had a repressed wish to harm you. Do, do. The superego by far gets the worst press. But then you began to go and go and I was confused. Just because it was too easy doesn't mean it wasn't true. As it easily could be day, but it's night. I wanted to break my addiction to eating muffins for lunch. You wanted to be able to sleep all the way through the night, which is a reasonable desire. You thought you were going deaf. Every third word I said was a zone of probability. Could I speak up? You were too young for this. I was always apologizing for my mumbling, and you always assured me I spoke clearly. Now you wondered if it was true, if I had strained your hearing to the point of breakdown. Such problems are woven into the fabric of social life, right? Yes, but but I just keep I keep wishing. Yes, for for you look you look wonderful. You look wonderfuler. Drummed out days. 
stretched over a frame of bone, which is the only way of knowing, for animals at least, not slugs. There's one version in which we're both virgins, one in which we're sluts, one in which one of us is virgin, the other slut. Shut the fuck up about that, okay? Every weekend you drove over a mountain pass. You drove too fast and spoke into a dictation machine, the most private, self-indulgent things, running narrations of nervous habits, like picking the skin off your lips, elaborate, searching descriptions of smells from long ago. I know this, the thing about you, when you suffer, everyone feels it. Not always, not everyone. When you're being <coughs> irresponsible. You wondered if my little voice was making you deaf, but you soon figured out it was not my voice, not your ears. You had never really listened to me before, not fully. And now that you wanted to, you didn't know how. You had to concentrate, face clenched. I spent the whole evening talking while you concentrated. I glowed with appreciation. You cried that night for how much you had missed over the years because you had thought your life depended on going on talking. Holy shit, you said. So you are dethroned, coming down off the thing, inch by inch, a project that can't be sustained. You look strange when you're tired. You are untelevisable. You are always turning your head back and forth, compelled by some unnatural ocean to say, I can't continue like this, OK? I've said it. Rachel weeping for her children because they were not. We're just, I mean, we don't, we don't have that, like fumbles for your wallet, who gets care in an emergency, the mutilated ones, of course. I said what, that, I don't know. Is there any hot water left? Then you came home and announced that you had finally become an adult because of the way you were waiting for the bus. My meal that night was baked beans, cottage cheese, and steamed kabocha squash as it could easily be day, but it's night. You were suddenly sick the morning of the third day. Not that it matters, but it's the truth. I hate my tone of voice, you said, unwilling to go on reading the book out loud. Get over it. I want to hear. A story is for someone, for one within whom you want to preserve your seismically shifted version of events. Our discovery of the yogurt we came to love pushed forward a month, a day here fallen into crevasse, a missing explorer. Face before face, good night. You had a dream you finally found the tiny bamboo whisk you had been searching for, but like all dreamt things, the whisk kept changing until it no longer served its function. It was still what it was, but it could no longer whisk. What could it do? Which I hadn't expected. I yelled at you. You yelled back in a voice that should have come from a body of water. And I was falling at the place my mouth was, shouting as if in high wind. And then I was all there, and I stamped and screamed, yes, and then it was today. What happened to make us live like this, I wondered. The sweatshirt you're wearing would make anyone mad. We laugh. It's as if when I see your body, I see you as a person. There is now a philology of our intimate life old words and, like, what do you call it? Coinages. If you are dependent on me, this will expose my incompetence because I cannot really help anyone. If you are independent of me, it is because you know my worthlessness, the usual stuff. I have my moods, too. I would write down my caloric intake. I would bore you with my personal concerns, <coughs> which seem so unsuited to the world historical stage, or even the, what do you call it, the community. It's better when you talk. We see cows and you talk about them. The cows become charmingly invested with conversation. Cows exist, you know, on their own terms. Do you have any fucking, I mean, any fucking, even an inkling of awareness of that? You're filled with hate because you have a headache and because you do care. You woke up very hungry. You thought maybe there were some cashews in the dresser drawer. You checked, they weren't there. You pause in the middle of the room and fantasize. Our story, the gospel of success, love birds, the deep, deep craft of sincerity. Going out the door away from your curled up body. Goodbye, Easter basket. Envy and gratitude, but it passed. We came to depend on something having happened on how it was. We walked past mirrored buildings and some with tinted plexiglass balconies, the kitchen appliance store. We would be broke soon but you also had savings that we would maybe someday use to begin a life, 
You did not think of beginning a life. Baby? What? My leg won't stop spasming. Try moving. Why do I believe what I hear? That there is only one good song on the album. That, that there are albums. That the source of my misery is a greater economic condition. Um, maybe because it's true. Why do I let people make eye contact with me? How could I not let? You, a folk song of imp impossibilities. Finally, finally. You cried while a nurse held you. Her name was Violet, and she was a minuscule Christian. Imagined herself a sister of mercy. I envied her. The last person in the world to be threatened by, you said. You would apologize, apologize. I said, the only thing I don't want to hear is you apologizing, and the only thing you seem to want to do is apologize. You know, everything works wrong. It's fun. It's a Zen thing, except the completely wrong. Nursing that image of you, where meaning comes from in your body, how it gets to where it's going, point A to point B, carrying your mother to her final resting place, a canyon filled with gore and vultures, mercy present if it snows. The city could not remain uninvolved. It and you manufactured a feeling. Were there rundown storefronts, tarped over rides? You wanted to work, but I told you not to. You needed to be in bed and held. Your narrows sagging from neglect. The apartment got no light. You didn't know what was happening. We fell asleep, slumped against each other's sides, and dreamed of mornings in the spring when we would wake every day to the knowledge that winter was over. Every sentence you spoke was making you older and wiser, sentenced, feverish, avid of pleasure. <coughs> you looked out the window in the morning, but there was nothing but the lemon tree that was dying, as well as the bigger pepper tree, and today there were a million brown finches in it, squawking and gibbering, something going on. You got dressed because you figured I was in the kitchen, but then you sat there a long time and I was obviously gone already. You also thought the sun would come out and you could lay in it with your arms stretched out above your head, but it stayed gray. You've had your breakfast and shower and are down behind the bed looking for your sock. The myth of you tames my experience of you. I treat the story as if it were the same as the effect it had on me. And at the pivotal moments when I was pinned by you to manifold quilts, I imagined you were looking down on me with serene inevitability, getting peaceful revenge, knowing, as I did, that there are certain ways of speaking oneself into the world, certain lanes open, I realize that everyone is always living in wartime. You mean common sense? <coughs> a memory in which I walk downstairs to pick up something I forgot and the low confidential voices of a small group unravels into an incoherent mumble and I remember a lot of the tag ends of conversations. I never see you. You keep your mouth shut. All right, I surrender. That's it. If that's what I have to work with, thank you. In this kind of life, those who suffer aren't the ones who are able to complain, can't afford to be thought tiresome. That morning we were at low ebb. God knows what we were thinking, but I can tell you what we were doing. I gazed out the kitchen window into the street, cold, dry day, blanks between everything. Wind in even patterns pushes the little that's there. Squirrels are there, though. I turned on the stove. You were there at the table, chopping bananas, wearing a purple sweater I'd never seen. You look nice, I said. Peppercorns, you said. Any more in the cupboard? Pepper? I thought you were making nine grand cereal. Thank you. give Bernadette Mayer the succinctest introduction so I can get out of the way and hear her read. <coughs> but I also want to do justice to Mayer's record of experimental writing, which is not succinct. It is wonderfully expansive, rivaled only by Stein and its depth energy and the possibilities Mayer's work has made for poetry. Mayer's great books include her genre-inventing durational works of the 1970s, Memory, 1975, Studying Hunger, 1976, Midwinter Day, 1982. 
She's equally an experimenter in traditional forms, and her writing resolutely explodes any kind of dialectic between the experimental and the traditional. In Utopia 1984, Sonnets 1989, and the formal field of kissing, among others. And I have to mention some of her other amazing books, and there are so many. The Unsent Epistolary Epic, The Desire of Mothers to Please Others in Letters, The Deconstruction of Narrative and Story, the post-industrial documentary poem, The Helens of Troy, New York. Mayer's famous writing workshops, her leadership at the Poetry Project, and her editorial work in Zero to Nine and United Artists offer firm evidence of poetry's belonging to collective life, as do her many collaborations, including the 315 experiment with Leanne Brown, Jen Hofer, and Danica Dismore, What's Your Idea of a Good Time with Bill Bergson, The Cave with Clark Coolidge, and my favorite, the basketball article with Ann Waldman. In that short text from 1975, Mayer and Waldman imagine poetry as basketball. Quote, some poets are booed for using the language awkwardly. Others cheered for coming up with a new style of play. I wonder if when Mayer was drinking with Oscar Robertson, she thought about the novelty of one of the greatest basketball players of all time meeting one of the greatest poets of all time. I think that Mayer's poetry is LeBron. <laughs> she can dominate the game at all positions. She makes plays not thought possible before. She refuses categorization. Mayer and Waldman write, it'd be interesting to put Oscar Robertson in a dream laboratory. I would like to see Mayer and Waldman doing color commentary at the All-Star Game on Sunday. <laughs> it's a good time to be a basketball fan, but it's an even better time to be a Bernadette Mayer fan. <laughs> In 2014, Tender Buttons put out a beautiful expanded edition of Sonnets, along with a publication honoring Mayer's famous writing experiments. Station Hill Press recently published the full text of Mayer's Study in Hunger Journals, and last year, Eating the Color of a Lineup of Words, the early books of Bernadette Mayer. And we are getting stunning new work, too. In addition to the Helens of Troy, New York from 2013, Mayer published The Ethics of Sleep in 2011, and At More Reads with Greg Masters in 2013. Later this year, Works and Days is forthcoming from New Directions. Just a poem, not a big project for changing the world, Mayer writes in one of my favorite of her sonnets. But if a poem can't change the world, it can give more possibilities for writing and thinking and worlding, for otherwise worlds and otherwise possibilities and otherwise ways of being and loving and thinking together. Mayer's writing does that endlessly. Utopia, Mayer's utopia, ends like this. Here is some utopian, some and everything. Add all you would to what is already here. Together we will put things on paper that have never been there. Thank you for doing so much of that. Please welcome Bernadette Mayer. First, I have to read to you my poem about being 70. Walking like a robin. Take three or four steps, then stop. Look, smell, taste, touch, and hear. Is there anything to eat? Oh, look, there's some caviar. It must be my birthday. Thanks. I must be very old, like 70. I guess I'm falling apart. I'll just sew myself back together, but will it last? Please take a piece of me back and back home. Each piece is anti-war, and don't pay your rent. In fact, remember, 
property is robbery. Give everybody everything. Other birds walk this way too. <laughs> This is an ancient poem that, uh, I don't know, why, why am I reading this? Oh. <laughs> anyway, it's called, <laughs> I can't explain. It's called <laughs> The Tragic Condition of the Statue of Liberty. And it's based, it was, when it was written, it was based on an article that appeared in the New York Times. Now, since this poem was written, and the article, since the article appeared, obviously, uh, the Statue of Liberty has been repaired. But, but it was kind of fun to write this poem. It, uh, it, a collaboration with Emma Lazarus. <laughs> Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free the wretched refuse of your teeming shore, send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Give me your gentrificities of the Lower East Side, including all the well-heeled young Europeans who'll take apartments without leases. Give me your landlords, give me your cooperators, give me the guys who sell food and the computers to the public schools in District 1. Give me the IRS, FBI, CIA men who don't take election day off. Give me the certain members of the school board and give me the district superintendent. Give me all the greedy members both American and foreign capitalist religious sects. Give me the parents of the punk people. Give me the guy <laughs> who puts those stickers in the Rice Krispies. <laughs> give me... <laughs> give, <I can't. laughs> give me the doctor who thinks his time is more valuable than mine or my and my daughters and the time of all the other non-doctors in the world. Give me the mayor, his mansion, the president, and his White House. Give me the cops who laugh and sneer at meetings where they demonstrate the new uses of mace and robots instead of the old murder against people who are being evicted. Give me the landlord's sleazy lawyers and the deal, <laughs> the deal-making judges in housing court, and give me the landlord's arsonist. <laughs> give me, give me the known and unknown, big, important, rich guys who now bank on our quaint neighborhood. Give me, forgive me, the writers who have already, or want to write bestsellers in this country. Together we will go to restore Ellis Island ravaged for years by wind, weather, and vandals. I was surprised and saddened when I heard that the Statue of Liberty was in such a serious state of disrepair and I want to help. This is the most generous contribution I can afford. <laughs> Uh, I was writing with my students at uh, the College of St. Rose uh, and uh, I was asking them to imitate each other's writing because by that time we were all familiar with each other's work. But I gave out the papers and there was none, I should have figured this out before, there was none left for me. So I had to uh, call from a uh, a uh, handout that I'd given them the week before, which was love poems by all these different poets. And I wound up having to imitate Rilke. Can you imagine? <laughs> but I was happy, actually, at the end. 
and it's called After Rilke. Someday, when will I lose you? Will you be able to sleep without me? Will you hear me whispering in your dream, like a star anise growing next to you? My words are your eyelids. Do your breasts listen? Will your love listen, like a Melissa kissing my eyelids with your mouth? We both close and leave. We are both one, but are each other's, like a garden that can kiss, like the kiss that comes from more kisses. <laughs> Uh, these are from uh, the book Sonnets. Mm. And I can read any of the funny ones, so don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Sonnet. Beauty of songs, your absence I should not show. How artfully I love you. Can you love me? Let's be precise. Let's abdicate decorum. You come around. You often stay. You hit home. Now you are knocking. You need a Tylenol. From all that comedy, what will you tell? At least you speak. I think I'd better not. Often men and not women have to sleep. You've come and gone to write the perfect poem, and not ten like men or blossoms, but I am profligate. I strike the ground for ruin while you sensibly sleep, and so in this at least a poem can have an end. My, how could you sleep? I go to wake you up, my Lysistrata, my unannounced rhyme. A marriage of cut flowers. It's a room in a hotel. This has no Mr. Meaning at all. The promiscuous lilacs, the too sweet tuberose, some sweet Williams, and a pink delphinium dolphin. Who sees them says that this place must, that this place must fill this room with something. To fuck everyone as in the millennium it might be a very great pleasure to seduce and slap at all smells. I could hit your penis, grandfather, of a funeral parlor or a regular field, and all that is complaining, darling. This is from uh, Midwinter Day. And this is the, from the part of Midwinter Day where I start uh, telling stories to my children. So I'll read a couple of them. Popped out of the fire, a girl lived there with her brother and grandfather. Though the girl slept alone every night, some person came to sleep with her. The person who came to sleep with her never spoke. He came to her he, there a long time. And then the girl became pregnant. She did not say anything of it. She was afraid to. Now this is what she thought. I will paint my hand. That is the way I will find out who it may be. Indeed, that is what she did. And then, in the night, she hugged him. She put her hand on his back. Now, the people, men, were going to come out of the sweat house where they were sleeping. And so she watched in secret. And then all those people, men, 
came out. Indeed, now she learned it was her own older brother who was sleeping with her. And then she died. And he also died. When she died, her father laid upon... I'm sorry. And he also died. He starved himself in his shame and grief. And that is why she, he died too. When she died, her father laid her upon the fire and he held an Indian blanket and the old man spoke thus, Pop put out to this here. Sure enough, the baby popped out from her scorching corpse. Now his grandfather brought it up. Septimius Felton was a character of Hawthorne's who tried to create the elixir of life from some old Italian recipes of his aunt's and the secret information given to him by a soldier he shot during the Revolutionary War. On the soldier's grave, a red flower grew. It was supposed to have been the last ingredient, sanguinaria, sanguinaris, blood root growing from the heart of a young man violently killed. But the flower was a hoax, painted by the Englishman's lover, who seduced Septimius and helped him make the potion, which was now a deadly poison. Then she drank it, confessed all, and died. Then Hawthorne intimates that Septimius, who loved knowledge too much, inherited the English soldier's estate and became a boring landowner whose descendants had dull and lifeless eyes. <laughs> Joshua, the son of Nun, sent men to Jericho to spy for him. They went to the house of a harlot named, named Rahab. She hid them from the king because she said she knew the Lord had given them the land and had dried up the water of the Red Sea for them. In exchange for her help, they agreed to spare her and her family from annihilation if she would hang a scarlet thread from her window. This is from uh, The Ethics of Sleep, uh, and we are uh, honored to have the person who originally typeset it in the house here, Hannah Zivan. Uh, I'll read the two sections. This is called uh, Golden Up the Glass. If I have $450 plus $260, and I'm also expecting $60 in the mail, then I have $770. If that $770 is added to the $1,440 that still exists for me in this world, then there are $2,210, which means we can live for 110 and a half days with no hope of any future income. <laughs> Let's figure it out again. <laughs> the Queen mentioned that criminals are dangerous detectives. Come and shoot them. I've come too close to great risk twice, twice lately. I think I'll call Dr. George Rubenfein. While talking to the detectives, to whom we don't listen. No form, no structure. I was thinking of these problems just as I went back to the collapsing refrigerator which has to be transported. Well, the memory of the part is subject, subject to but does not bring back the memory of that he puts electric combs into his hair and shouts about where to put them where does this go? 
it's like a fiber fiberglass temple, but he is not he. And the weird misshapen, different size apples, Cortland, Max, looks for one. And the large brown whiskey are, brought, are bought by him at the store, question mark. But his name's not question. I'm sorry. Hmm. But his name's not question, and to pick up little pieces of jewelry enrages him. You're selfish. I'd better say something about Berkson's wrong house. There's something more. What are we watching, eating? There's something missing, three somethings. There was the mention of the living of three for me, the thought of having to be supplies enough I think maybe the sweetness of nature could change him. List of the names of when you see how the forest falls down all by itself like a path. You better list the things. You better you could put this in poetry lines. Figure out how to change the world and forget aesthetics, not because of semiotics, but because nobody understands a word you say. Plus, you got to analyze what to do and how to do it. Next, like, take warmongering, the structure of the beam that flies through the room, right above the poem or new poem form, not poem, that's being written at that time. No opinions as violations and practically no criticism. No time for that. Those beams are like the fire things in Nintendo games that shoot over your head so you can avoid them if you're small, if you get a mushroom, and even both extra lives, Mario Brothers, and the luminosity of unavailability to death. You're much too tall to avoid them and have to last, have to be fast enough to jump over them or die one of your lives that you've stored up we have to figure something out about communities and how worlds can zip around the Koopa and especially <laughs> the Koopa Troopa and the Bowser so we can get out of the available suggestions of the world that exists with enemies and like the any instruction booklet that doesn't wear a suit and a tie or charades without those appurtenances, proceed to peace, birth control, and the sharing of food, shelter, and arcs of compliments on warmth. No organized religion, please, and knowledge is too mentionable, lest you slip and fall on a rock full of ferns. Now we can write the poem in some <coughs> form. When you see how the forest falls down all by itself like a path, you better fill in this part, lest you slip and fall on a rock full of ferns. This got rid of all wars, and now go on. Short distance space, travel with air, compress the ferry. It is so beautiful, you can barely fit in walking slow, perceived as fast to reach, I kiss her, her toes, to keep going into the story room where non-military and awake they're literally falling apart in the sex cubicle we say don't bother it's the story of the character who was the sheriff now chief of police they make everybody leave no it's everyone because there are there are a because their exact gene dupes of some including ones of two who are crippled and visions of the duplicates. The, he moves into his outer office, puts flowers on his desk, little pieces of everybody's possessions come flying apart in the mall. The woman who loves heights awaits, always awaits up in a cherry picker caught by strong winds to throw the mail down to the truck I wonder if the sheriff 
should or would leave two O favors of faces. How do we interfere with or change course of your life through poems is the question. Still you altered the trip of the girlfriend. For instance, he doesn't sleep with his wife. She keeps on having babies. Anyhow, 180 <laughs> plus 65 is 245. That's two and a half hours work. And this, this part is called the, the Wild Menu, which is named after uh, Frank Wild, who was one of the uh, people on the uh, Admiral Scott expedition to the Antarctic. How Eisenhower was elected. If a boy was framed in a shooting gallery for having murdered someone by accident when all he did was throw a catch ketchup bottle, since Eisenhower believed that all men and memories are identical anyway, and also that nothing mattered, he took the rap. Mr. Sadden, Sandman, bring me a dream. Make it the sweetest that I've ever seen. Give me a pair of lips just like roses and clover and tell them that my lonesome nights are over. Oh, dreidel, 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 I made it out of the fire. And when it's dry and ready, oh, dreidel, I will play. A leo leotard is a teacher running away. On my way, a man shouts in the ferry terminal, that's how I got that's how I get my letters, holding up a blank page with his dad's big Banks letterhead. Not one word said. Deep in, deeper into the checkmate changing clothes I keep at school. I keep at school in a box under the bed to go to a funeral. Should I leave, should I, and should I say, leave the money? There's question. There's question. It's Greg's birthday, and he's nine years old, and wears a beautiful cap, cape. He's in his thirties, a blue moon leap year baby. Dan Forth gets thrown out of school for refusing to be meeting and refusing to be leaving the meeting for talking. This school's too loud. I agree. The food turned to ashes in her mouth woman doesn't want to risk being loved again. Three icy tulip sculptures are sent through the mails. The three tenths grants they may give you are prizes just for little lush garden grades. You yourself miniaturize and you live. Shelves of bread in the house library. Does anyone ever change it? A big, a big, a big, a lot of leaping party is planned as camouflage, a children's theater piece. I keep trying to keep things straight, but not straight. It's daylight savings. Gerard and I are going to the bathroom in a series of fantastic poses. The last lying down, upside down, I couldn't figure out how. I don't want him to know I'm observing what we're doing. It's daylight savings. Should we intermix other material with getting a cab from a real estate agent, a motorcycle built for three, or more simply, Max drive me, drives me to Random House. I, meant, I mean to Random House, while Sophia is, reach, is teaching Max how to box. Woke 6.15 a.m. There is ascultation box, ascultation nest, ascultation watch, need green string to get to school, dressing in red, sick on way to new school, to the new school, I mean, to we converse with Marie through country lanes about stringing the Oris gold, Golders beads, period. At St. Luke's fur coats, draped over whale-shaped staircase. I hugged janitor and talked to him about it, but ab about it, but he won't let go as we enter the 
a pate of the bourgeoisie called Gerard peeling plaster from, like from the exotic trunk of the paper bark trees fall on the priest's head as he stands outside after service because he didn't stand under protection of the ginkgo from fever, don't know the day. You defeated means you made them lose, then that means you won. Are there two twins, two brothers, two fathers? Shaking Bella's hand, Reverend Bella handshake. She says the bottom of the one of the hands of us is sticking, sticky from foods. Are, are there two twins? I just do everybody tells me, I just do everything anybody tells me to. That's why I have nice kids, because I've obeyed before they do. <laughs> he raised his glass in Spanish, for he loved what he had to say to them. Were you just in France with me? In France with Philip and Bill B? Were you granted a continuance? No, because all of the others who have affection for, for you, I didn't want one. It's not careful enough. Are you from Tuber and Tuber or from Malaysia? Oh my, my, the tape math papers. Great how he'll let the movie quest, let how to fly a soft furry animal from the liquid pink house of the inheritors under a mass of crossing stings a king for electricity, two black men, too tall, in green shirts and heads, at ceiling to be kissed, pick me up and hold me above the ground in tunnels to out indoor bees with curtained window suits. We forget to wear our shorts and edge shorts. We forget to share. We couldn't see, we fell down, couldn't move heavy limbs. Fell, we fell on the turnstile, called a number for a cab, $27 to get back to the place you were born in. Who wars there? Rosemary and J. Herbert Phil or Philip Good. Someone had been wearing just a piece of cloth with a hole for my head. And then the other Marie, deserting herself by mother death when I was 14, becomes the newer Marie at 14, deserting me through filtrators from the filtrucious fil at four times the beginnings at beggings of margins, of margins, and this is a reference to New Directions, to the publisher, New Directions, which cast on its side is PS6B, whose child is Manny, and PS12, is Manny hopeful, and PS15 is mid Manny hopeful plurals, and in PS34 is born of Haddenta, and in PS5 is a type ribbon, and in PS28 is can't help, and in PS33 is sentence. There is sentence. We have many colors in the rooms if you want to make use of them. Too much death, Bernadette, said Miguel. <laughs> All over Boston were free public vegetables, and New York City, the gauntlet, getting, getting banged or balanced by things walking through the second half of poetry class, which is death wouldn't take to him so vocabulary for rapucali. Why shouldn't it? Why would it? Or of causeless dying, sent to a, us to prove with apologies that some are angels, we can't prove it? Is that how poets die? Gerard asked, not in artifice. People go away now without any reason. Vocabulary, voracularly, dominus phobiscum, no way deaths of too many. Hmm. 
This is called uh, Booze Turns Men Into Women. A sip of Coors makes children be nuclear power plant contractors. Wild turkey turns men into deer. Molson's Canadian beer makes all the people fear laundromats. <laughs> Stolznaya turns women into rolling rocks. Men turn women into oatmeal stout. Jack Daniels turns men into Queen Anne's lace. Triple sack turns men into margaritas. <laughs> Their Budweiser Juven often undoes mein Leben. <laughs> Grand Manier turns women into ancient mariners. <laughs> Creme de Cassis creates child toxic waste entrepreneurs. <laughs> Watney's weakens warriors. A taste of Jennifer, Jen, well, it's, I don't know how you can say it. A taste of Jennifer turns Beatrice into a T-square. Martell's makes men mooseheads. Heineken's dimwit god couscous miracle, miracle elf. <laughs> Gins turn men into safety pins. Shiva's Regal makes men sewing needles. Black-eyed Susans turn men into Jack Daniels. Women wake from highballs as walnuts. <laughs> Cocktails alienate communalists. And a glass of Schaeferol make your kid a general. <laughs> Uh, this is a, a real letter I received from the IRS. I'm just going to read it. <laughs> it's called Dear Amended Return Technology. <laughs> we have received your amended return for the tax year indicated above. We will review your return as soon as possible. Since we have a large number of similar requests, it may take as long as three months before yours is processed. We apologize for any inconvenience this de delay may cause you. You will receive a notice from us regarding this tax year when the change has been completed. If you have any questions, you may call or write us see the information in the upper right corner. To make sure that IRS employees give courteous responses and correct information to taxpayers, a second IRS employee sometimes listens in to the <laughs> telephone calls of the first. Love, the IRS. <laughs> P.S. <laughs> to make sure that IRS employees give courteous responses and correct information to taxpayers, a second employee sometimes listens in on telephone calls. These are the old uh, poems that I wrote when I was uh, first writing, and uh, somebody somebody said to me, uh, "Well, how does it feel to deal with all your old work? You mu it must be horrifying." And I said, <laughs> "I said no. Uh, actually, it's much better than my new work." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is called Fan, and it's an imitation of uh, a poem by uh, Mallarmé. 
Rose's horse to live, all the vein in interim print, with calyx blank to prompt, breath in rhyme to give. But the stroke in battle saves, profound the stuff of it, shock in awe, frigid in melting, cold in thaw, in laugh in flower in waves. Casting the sky by piecing detail, hear it so like in Fentail, you are better than a file. Nothing closed in emery, sent to lose or defile, defile. Something comes from emery. A funny thing about uh, a lot of the old poems of mine is that I seem to have them memorized. <laughs> I'm not saying that for a laugh, I'm saying that's weird. <laughs> This one is called uh, Boats. On sunnier days, a new coat of arms made the ocean high on the edge of the land, a manifestation to axes and cones. Here at the door, after floating, what a relief then. It is a feast to us. Downstairs, the matter of the bottle. When you go over the sea here, is the part which turns in the wake of the reservoir first our belief in altitude in terms overlooking us we were on to you we walked by we tumbled before the steeple finding some see us see the east differently from the comfort of travels suppose it was the solstice courses taken over the safe flood in oxhide and oaken titles to arise by land, born by comparison and services and use. The north transept, as the blind bewail the southern side, is a new resonance. We, our table, our table and sea coats beside us sing. With subject files, we erect a statue turning toward the west, coming forward in the shadows, a bad face as the mail is to come. Only such boats and sea chairs and ovens inexorable, boats on the sea. You should never begin to race in paint so red and bark as a mason in the current of events. Down the line in place in advance as a stone, downstairs a dry permission to build respects interring the city wall. The boats rise as high as a stone. Oars are floating. You should never come and work so readily <coughs> in confusion. Never come here stitched in sides, edging over stages spoken like a tiger repeatedly. Some feasts edge into questioning of traveling, of seeing sights. In the hall, the place is still, airs within the tapestries. N and are offered N and are placed to finally part before such a building. By night, I respect the address and <coughs> reflect and spring arriving at letters. Then spend the final revolution in old red paint on the mantle. This is called uh, Counter Hatch. In all part, in point, in singing part, in mountains, part, in point, the store, the ancient, the old, always have intermissions. Part of this is too bold, but owning a part of the old may turn into science, part to the bold, that's the ending. In quiet parts of the old, now after always a light, we silence, not ours, but the enemies toward an efficiency wanting an end. The end. We make ourselves richer. We start what's untold in papers, turned in words, not marks. That's red, which is racial, absorbed. Where are elements 
man to raise. He's happy. Nothing in Detroit that fantasy excludes. Why not? Plumber, a mass, a nude, and so on. To alternates and averages, averages tombs, two spaces, told spaces, denied again, sold. Questions in pleat, the unanimous fold, now in rites, then in bells, execute. Ignore the story, build a cemetery. An abstraction, the end, the owl, where in point, language of country, exhort. So to end the expelling of, exploit the untelling of, dams putting in these reminders of death, that's purple. Toward denying to continue to the end, there by continuing the end of, done we expel them for social, the kind of space of the actual space of breath and with it the space for the space of the rest. As a joke for retelling cannot persist in unpeeling all the world's explorations, we rise to get up at the stroke of, found what was lost in the heat of, white battle and waves, and found in rough <coughs> the gut of it, having in melting how, the rest in awe, still how in awe, flower in laugh in flower in waves, and singing and entering and awe again, and this time it's awe of the reverse, that's green. <clears throat> of returning to scream without thinking, the end in thinner, of thick and simplers, of, of trees, in parrot to lisp, sea anemone, closed. Apology and rest, research isn't festive, looking for names, burning down peers and papers, and scoring the time, I'm translated to shore on the back of a porpoise, and to see like a mirror turned to the port, so for saying injection as far as it goes, in the arm truth of black symbols. We'll adopt parents that cannot grow, anthem, emblem, knife, a knife for the course that ends like this, not like that, and they'll all come to orbit, orbit in the courts by force, we'll make the exchange, and to count, continue to embrace, forgetting parts in important to in concurrence, that's gray. We'll fissure the end and cleave, cleave in parting by statements, by surgery, by force, cerebral from parent, dim from Latin, everything's in half. We do it by force, by the time. This is the final, please let me ending in dive and ring, proposing in answer the positions for silence growing minerals, closed sky another, and how to pre prepare, rhyme to give, file in wave, waves, blank to prompt, in ending, amend, that's brown. <coughs> Thank you. A few of the many books that Daniel mentioned are for sale there, courtesy of University Press Books. Um, come down and talk to the poets, and a big thank you to Christian and to all the arrows of Bernadette that we heard tonight. Thank you.